What's up sellers and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you ScanLister. Uh, it is the dedicated listing software that I use for Amazon FBA. I simply scan my books in and it populates everything into Seller Central and makes the process so seamless. And so I'm gonna share that with you today. I'm actually making this video to show how to use the software as well as the settings and get everything rolling for Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna be using a stack of books for this example. These are from my private library right there. And so we're going to use these. Uh, I linked my Yoyo 1D Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi scanner to my computer. So I will be scanning with this and it will be showing up on the screen. And so all that is cool. And we're gonna jump into this today. Uh, if you need a scanner, this is one that I highly recommend, link in the description. If you're interested in getting a listing software, I highly recommend ScanLister. There's a 14 day free trial link in the description of this video. With that being said, let's jump into this ScanLister video. All right, so we're going to look at ScanLister and the settings that you have to have set up before you actually start listing in your books. Um, up here in the upper left hand corner, you can kind of see this information. Uh, SKU prefix, scan lister, SKU sequence. Uh, I start at one supplier. You can put in you know, any sort of um, supplier that you might use, Goodwill or bookstore or library. Uh, the date you purchase something, you put that in there. There's a bunch of different fields here. Uh, default price. So basically the way scan lister works is you set a default price. For me, it's $49. Every single thing that I list, it comes in to the software at 49 bucks. And then once it hits Amazon, my repricer reprices it to what it needs to be. This is an automation that saves me tremendous amount of time, energy, and mental real estate. Uh, below that is default quantity and then cost per unit. Then on the right hand side of that, you see conditioned, you have like new, very good, good, acceptable, then you have collectibles and then new. Uh, below that condition notes, you have these condition notes here. And then listing method, bulk or detailed. I only deal in bulk listing because the detailed listing just takes too long when it comes to listing massive amounts of books. Uh, we're gonna jump into the settings section of this. So right here in the bottom right hand corner, there's a button that says settings. You open it up, it says options, show product information, save upload history. You definitely want both of those on. If you have a tax code, you can add a tax code in here. Uh, for me, my minimum price for this is $1, max is $900. And that basically means that whatever my repricer sets the price at, it needs to just fall between $1 and $900. If it's outside of that parameter, that book will be put on hold. It'll be put in a stranded inventory status on Amazon. Now, would I really reprice to $1? Heck no. There's no way I'm repricing down to $1. I'm not even repricing below $10. However, for this right here, we wanna have a one to $900 range set. My repricer, however, has a minimum threshold set, a minimum floor set at $10.77. So it'll never reprice below that. However, that being said, with this $1 to $900 is that range that I leave open. That way there's no confusion, there's no screw ups when it comes to listing books through ScanLister. Box content will be deleted from local database after 60 days, that's a default, just leave that as it is. Adjust quantity when multiple ASINs with same condition and condition notes are added. What this means is, let's say you have two books of the same title with the same ASIN or the same ISBN, and you scan both of them, it's not gonna come up as two separate rows, it's just going to adjust the quantity in the quantity section to go from one to two to reflect both of those. Uh, include image, title, and condition for box content, yes. Merchant fulfilled options, I don't do any merchant fulfilled whatsoever, so I absolutely skip this section. Detailed listing, I don't do any detailed listing, so I absolutely skip this section. Skew pattern, for me, I do the prefix, which is scan lister, that it has to be a scan lister prefix for your SKU. And then I have purchase month, purchase day, purchase year, and then sequence. I have a four digit sequence. That way I can put up to a thousand or more books in here and it will each book will have its own sequence number. Condition notes. Now these are the condition notes that I've shared on previous videos 
They're down in the description of this video. You can copy them and save them to your computer or your smartphone, wherever you do your listing from. I simply imported them into here. And that way, whenever I click on the condition of a book to scan in a number of books in that condition, it populates that condition note directly in. Seamless. The conditions. You can add new, you can remove some, move them up, move them down. I have them set as like new, very good, good, acceptable, and then collectibles. I don't do much with collectibles and I rarely find new books. And so I just kind of have those set to the bottom. Whenever I go in to list books, I always start with acceptable books and then I move up to good and then up to very good and then up to like new if I have any. So that is why they are set in the order that they're set in. Suppliers, if you have a supplier, you can add this here, your Amazon account. Basically, you have to link your scan lister with your Amazon account, and there's actually a walkthrough on the website whenever you sign up for that 14-day trial, it walks you through the entire process. So I'm not gonna cover that here. Um, you can do that whenever you sign up for the 14-day free trial through the link in the description of this video. Once you have all those settings saved, save and continue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my EOYO 1D Bluetooth scanner. It's gonna ping up there, we're ready to go. You wanna make sure, because this is linked to the computer now, you wanna be very careful about where your cursor is whenever you scan. Whenever you scan the barcode of a book, no matter where your cursor is, it's going to put the ISBN in that section. So for this, we want it to be in the barcode section of ScanLister. This first book, we're simply gonna scan it, listen, and once you hear the ding, it means you're in. Now you can, in the beginning, monitor and look at what you've got going on here. You can see the title getting to yes, it's scanned the SKU. You've got your ID, product ID. Um, you've got your product type, the price that you set in, $49. Quantity, the condition, the notes, the rank. Uh, it covers all of this for you, okay? Next book, it's in. You just listen for that ding. Now, whenever you hear that uh-oh sound, that means that the barcode was not in the system, meaning that that was probably a barcode for a bookstore or a library. It's something that did not get read in the Amazon database. So I simply click out of that, I peel that label off, and I scan again. Boom, we're in. All right, so we have eight books that have been listed in here. From this point, it's super simple. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna make sure that it is selected for fulfillment by Amazon, and then you click list. It comes up with this dialog box that says success, listing complete. Please wait five minutes for the listings to appear in your Amazon Seller Central account. From this point, all you have to do is go into your Amazon Seller Central account, go up to inventory, in the drop-down, click on Manage FBA Inventory. And then whenever all of your books populate in there, you're going to select them and move along through the process, through your shipping plan, like you normally would. This cuts out a tremendous amount of time, effort, energy, and mental real estate when it comes to listing books. Simply open the program, make sure your date is correct, and then start scanning. Once everything's scanned and input through the ScanLister software, you click Upload, wait five minutes, go into Amazon Seller Central and complete the shipping process. Super simple, very seamless. Guys, I hope this was a helpful video and showed you just a little bit of what ScanLister is capable of when it comes to saving you time, effort, and energy. I hope this video helped you and I hope that I earned your thumbs up for this video. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing that as I bring videos just like this every single week to help you with your Amazon business. With all of that being said, I will see you guys on the next video.